It is week 27 of the NHL, and so far, the final act of the regular season has been complete mayhem. We got line brawls, unbelievable comeback stories, and playoff drama all over the league. A lot happened this week, so let's cover everything in this video. Sunday, District 5. Sunday only had one game on, and it was between the Canucks and the Ducks. Dakota Joshua scored twice for Vancouver as the Ducks continue to give their best impression of District 5. It's been a miserable year over there in Anaheim. I don't even know if coach Gordon Bombay could fix what's going on over there right now. I know they are young and rebuilding, so this was expected, but sometimes losing can really take a toll on the younger guys. As for the Canucks, they get two points in this one and maintain the first spot in the Pacific by moving six points ahead of Edmonton. Their prize for such a great season is likely a first round matchup between Nashville, LA, or Vegas. How wonderful. Monday, hockey history. It wouldn't be the 2024 season without some history being made, and Sidney Crosby did just that. They take on the league-leading Rangers, and Sid remains the king of deflections with this gorgeous goal. Sid the middle-aged man gets two goals and an assist in this one, moving to 82 points on the season and clinching his 19th season, averaging at least a point per game. That ties the great one himself for the most in NHL history, and it would be needed as the Pens snap New York's five-game winning streak. The hope for the playoffs is still alive, and I, along with Penguins fans, can't wait to see how they break everyone's heart. We also got a potential playoff matchup in round one between the Panthers and the Leafs, and Austin Matthews scored goals 61 and 62 to break his own franchise record. Leafs led by four in this one, but just to get all the suits in the lower ball all riled up with their sushi, they would allow three straight goals to make things interesting. Leafs luckily hang on, and every Toronto fan gets a taste of what's likely to come in the first round. Big game between the Flyers and Isles for the wildcard implications, and goaltender Sammy Earson would let in two goals on six shots in the first, so Torts had enough and throws in the 6'7 giant rookie between the pipes and Ivan Fedotov to start the second. The kid holds his own to help Philly get into the OT, where he would skate to the wrong net and the islanders brock nelson buries the winner to sink the flyers afterwards torch said the second period effort was pathetic for a flyers uniform but gave praise for fedotov's play despite being thrown into the fire and we haven't talked much about columbus this year because it's been one of the worst years in franchise history for them but one bright spot has been alex nylander alex was a high pick like his brother william but hasn't quite found a home yet at 26 years old but since joining the Blue Jackets, he's been on a heater scoring 10 goals in 17 games with Columbus. He scored twice in this one to ruin your parlay as the Jackets defeat the Avs 4-1. Notorious fourth overall pick Shane Wright is back in the NHL and he scores the game winner in a 4-2 Seattle win over the Sharks. The Shane Wright stare down at the NHL draft is stuff of legend and even though the redemption arc may take longer than people want, the kid is still only 20 years old. The potential frauds in the Winnipeg Jets had to answer the bell here before the narrative got way out of hand, so a 4-3 win to snap a six-game losing streak to the Kings was huge for their psyche. The perception around the Jets has certainly changed in the second half of the season. People had them pinned as Stanley Cup contenders, but now I don't even know how many people have them coming out of the first round. Then we have the Red Wings, and this team is putting their fans through hell and back, but thankfully, they're able to get a massive two points against the Lightning team that have caught fire in the second half. Detroit is somehow still on the outside looking in as they chase the Anomalies and the Tortorellas for the last playoff spot. Tuesday, don't give me hope. Please, Pittsburgh, don't do this. Don't give me hope of seeing a 36-year-old Sidney Crosby will his team into the playoffs. After all the bulk that's gone on this year, this game was enough to convince Penguins fans that there's still hope. The Devils had a 3-1 lead going into the third, and Evgeny Malkin and Sidney Crosby went off. Both of them scored twice to tie the game, and late in the third, Ricard Raquel puts one home to seal a Penguins victory. They now sit three points back in the last wildcard spot, and honestly, I think I'm going to be sick. There's a couple of certainties in this world. Death taxes and the Bruins being a good hockey team. They shut out the Preds 3-0 who have now lost three straight and it looks like they're going to finish first in their division once again despite losing Krejci and Bergeron. Let's just hope there's no choke involved this time. The Washington anomalies continue to make no sense as they get a golden opportunity to pick up two crucial points against the lowly Sabres and they fail miserably. They lose 6-2, which really adds onto that ridiculous goal differential, and they open the door for the Islanders to come right in and steal their spot. New York comes into Chicago, shuts down the Bedards in a riveting 2-1 win, and now they remain one point back of the last wildcard spot. Elsewhere in the East, the Panthers have looked way off down the stretch. They are 2-7-1 in their last 10 after a 5-3 loss to the Habs, 
and you gotta wonder if their play style has gotten to them a bit. Week in and week out, this team is mixing it up, being physical and making life hard on their opponent. But 27 straight weeks of that kind of play can be both mentally and physically taxing. Of course, they could just be saving it for the playoffs, but no team ever wants to enter the postseason on a cold streak. Wednesday, fight night at MSG. Honestly, this has got to be the most chaotic regular season in recent memory, and Wednesday was just another big example of that. Rangers versus Devils, and two seconds into the game, we got ourselves a good old-fashioned line brawl. Rempe answers the bell for McDermott after he called him out in the media, and the game started off with fireworks. A whole bunch of players get ejected, and then even the coaches start going at it. This rivalry is alive and well, and even though WrestleMania is this weekend, we got an early sneak peek at MSG. There was a hockey game that ended up breaking out at the scheduled fight, and both Panarin and noted bust Alexi Lafreniere had themselves a game. Both notch a goal and assist to bury the Devils and pretty much kill any chance of them making the playoffs. There was also another beatdown on Wednesday, but this one happened to be on the scoreboard between the Oilers and the Stars. The Oilers put on a defensive masterclass by letting Dallas stroll in with a 4-on-1 and obviously it results in a goal. Jake Ottinger makes 35 saves for his second consecutive shutout, and the Stars win their eighth in a row. The team in the West that no one talks about continue to be the silent killer. Kucherov continues to make his case to be the MVP as he gets a casual three assists in a 4-1 win over the Leafs. He now leads the NHL with 130 points on the season, and he's still haunting Leaf fans to this day. It is with regret that I have to inform you that the Seattle Kraken have been officially eliminated. Trevor Moore gets a hattie for the Kings in a 5-2 victory, and they pull within one point of Nashville for the first wildcard spot in the West. Throwback Thursday. Thursday felt like it was 2018 all over again with a Crosby and Ovi matchup having serious playoff implications. With the Penguins sitting three points back of Washington, this was a must-win game for both teams. The Penguins got two early in the first period, and the Caps just couldn't recover and looked like they were a step behind the play since that point. Surprisingly, the Penguins win without Sidney Crosby recording a point, and even though Ovi would still get his cookie late in the game, the Caps dropped their fourth in a row to their arch rival. That result somehow made a game between the Islanders and Blue Jackets interesting. Tied at twos in the third, the Islanders Noah Dobson rifles one into the net, and that would be the game winner as the Islanders replace Washington for the second wildcard spot in the East. Just when I think half of these teams are out of the battle, all of them do a remarkable job of sucking to let the other teams get back in the mix. Speaking of things that suck, the Senators put on a lovely performance as they got whooped 6-0 at the hands of Florida. The Panthers desperately needed this one to start feeling good about their game again, but the battle of the Kachucks just didn't seem to have that same fire due to half of the Senators being in vacation mode. Brady was visibly frustrated in this one, and I'd imagine that there's going to be some big changes for the organization come next season. Florida getting two points didn't help them gain any ground on Boston at all, unfortunately, as the Bruins beat the Hurricanes thanks to this slick tuck from David Pasternak. He goes upstairs where Mama hides all the sauce, absolutely filthy, and Boston maintains a four-point lead on the Panthers for top spot in the Atlantic. The other guys in Florida continue their hot streak as Captain Steven Stamkos activates Stammer Time and scores two in a 7-4 Lightning win. Of course, it's another no-big-deal three-point night for Kucherov. It's Buddy's part-time job leading the NHL in scoring, and once again, the Lightning are only two points back of the Leafs for third in the Atlantic. In the West, the Winnipeg Jets finally clinch their spot in the playoffs as they beat the Flames 5-2 thanks to a Gabe Velarde hat trick. The Preds and the Kings win their games to stay locked into both wildcard spots, all while Nathan McKinnon continues to try and hunt down his first MVP trophy as he gets a goal and two assists to stay on par with Kucherov and a 5-2 win over the Wild. Friday, Metro Meltdown. All right, heading into Friday, you got an absolute logjam in the Metro for the third spot and the last wildcard. With Philly, Washington, and Detroit all in action, surely someone's got to win a game here. Let's start with our friends over in DC who seemingly decided they want to become like the Penguins. Their aging franchise superstar doing his absolute best to will his team to victory and the rest of the team proceeds to lay an egg. Ovi gets both goals for the Caps to jump out to a two goal lead and then the floodgates open right up and Carolina scores four straight to rob two points for the Caps as they now drop five in a row. 
that means at least the door can open up for the Flyers, but they run into the best team when nothing matters, and that's the Buffalo Sabres. Jack Quinn scores twice for the Sabres, and the Flyers drop their sixth straight loss. The Metro is in a complete meltdown. That leaves Red Wings fans desperately hoping that their team can find a way to not choke, but a legacy game from Barkley Goodrow of all players and a Chris Kreider game winner sinks those hopes as the Red Wings lose 4-3 to the Rangers. This may be the closest and probably the most pathetic wildcard race in recent memory, but damn is it fun to watch. Now maybe the Shane Wright redemption arc may come earlier than expected as he gets his first two goal game in the NHL. It may have been against the District 5 Ducks but they all count. The other late game saw McDavid versus McKinnon but this one was all Oilers. Both Evander Kane and Connor McDavid got two goals while Nathan McKinnon was only held to one assist. The concern in this one for the Avalanche is Mikko Rantanen who was forced to leave the game early after this hit by Ekholm. He could miss some time and if it is serious, it could be a big loss for the Avs during the playoffs. Lastly, we have the Vegas injured reserves against the Salt Lake City Coyotes. This one looked like an easy walk in the park for Vegas as they were up 4-1 at the end of the second and then we got another NHL miracle. A second Vegas collapse in as many weeks and the Coyotes score six straight goals in the third to win 7-4 absolutely incredible keep them in the desert they deserve it after that one vegas has done some uncharacteristic things here down the stretch but i'm sure they will get some help come playoff time saturday hockey night the first game on deck we had were the tampa bay lightning versus the pittsburgh penguins and it was arguably the game of the year this game had an electric finish, but it started with the Penguins coming out hot. Sid the middle-aged man gets on the board to get his 40th of the year, absolute animal. The rest of the Penguins core in Malkin and Latang also score to give the Penguins a 4-1 lead going into the third. Now that's the worst lead you can have in hockey, and Tampa plants the seed of doubt by scoring in the first minute of the third period. Then there is a scary collision which saw referee Steve Kazari crash into Tampa D Hayden Flurry. Kazari needed a stretcher and both teams came off the bench to make sure that he was okay and show their support. The game took some time to get some emotion back into it, but Tampa would score two more and come all the way back from being down 4-1. And if you're a Penguins fan, you're thinking, this is it. This is how they break my heart. They're going to do it like this. They're hitting posts, Malkin's hitting empty nets, and he can't believe it. It looked like the Penguins were somehow going to find a way to choke this one yet again, but then a late goal from Michael Bunting would be the game winner, and the Penguins finally move into a wild card spot after everything that they've gone through. Now to make things even more interesting, the Flyers lose their seventh straight to the Columbus Blue Jackets, while the Islanders ride a 41 save shutout to a victory, and that means that as it stands, the Isles and the Penguins hold the last two playoff spots in the East. It's also official that the Ottawa Senators are the only team allowed to decide what's the rules for scoring on an empty net. After the final buzzer went in a 4-3 loss to the Devils, Captain Nico Heischer slid the puck into the empty net after time expired. That royally pissed off Captain Brady Kachuk and caused a line brawl to break out at the end of the game. That's got Leaf fans seeing this clip everywhere acting like John Travolta in that one scene of Pulp Fiction because if everyone remembers, the Sens didn't think it was a big deal that Ridley Gregg took a slap shot in an empty net. To me, it's simple. All Brady's mad about here is that he sure didn't take a slap shot and so if he did, it would have been a way better way to end this game. Either way, Devils win and we get another line brawl in a chaotic week. Keeping it with the Toilet Bowl team's rookie William Eklund for the Sharks gets his first NHL career hat trick in style with an OT winner over the Blues. It's probably too late for the Sharks to push for the cup this season, but there is always next year. Now, if any team was going to snap the wheels off the wagon that are the Dallas Stars, it was going to be the Chicago Bedards. And of course, Bedard himself led the charge as he snaps a seven-game goalless drought in this one, and Chicago wins 3-2 and likely ruins your parlay that had Dallas getting the easy win. The Atlantic stayed pat as Leaf fans got to extend their future cup parade with a win over the Habs, while the Bruins picked up an important OT win against Florida. Boston now holds a five-point lead for the division, and Toronto fans likely get Florida in the first round instead of round two. In the late games, McJesus was able to get assist number 
98 and 99 on the season, while Dreisaitl scored his 40th of the year in the Battle of Alberta. The battle hasn't been the same since the downfall of Calgary, but Edmonton doesn't care and they'll take the two points in a 4-2 win. Mix that result in with a 6-3 Vancouver loss to the Kings, and the race for the first in the Pacific gets toit as the Oilers are three points back of the Canucks. So, what did you think of week 27 of the NHL season? What pissed you off? Who surprised you? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you want to get the latest breakdowns and recaps for the upcoming NHL playoffs, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications.